Thank you for watching Concord United on YouTube. Don't forget to hit subscribe so you can stay up to date with our latest videos. If you'd like more information about our church, please visit concordunited.org. We hope you will take advantage of our many opportunities to share Christ, serve others, and grow in faith. Well, thank you very much. It is great to be here at Concord United Methodist Church today. Your district superintendent, uh, Reverend Ann Robbins, drove me by the church during a fast tour on a district day several weeks ago. And I am glad to have the opportunity uh, to be on the inside today and uh, to share with you in this message and also to meet and greet and get better acquainted with the people of this church. I appreciate this congregation and its ministries. Just as I listened to some of the opportunities before you, uh, which were shared uh, during the community moments, I realized that this congregation is engaged in uh, the community, not only locally, uh, but also around the world. I'm appreciative of you uh, your staff, and your pastoral leadership. The scripture passage that I would like to share with you today comes from John chapter 1, and I'm going to be reading verses 1 through 5, and then verses 14 through 18. Please hear now the word of God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Sometimes silence is a gift. This is particularly true when we're in seasons of our life where there is lots of noise. My four siblings and I range in age by 12 years. You can imagine how noisy it was at our house. One day, my grandmother Wallace came over to visit my mother. Now, she had parented four children of her own, but even she was unprepared for what she experienced that day. Here's how I remember it. I was in the basement playing the trap set, working on increasing volume. One of my sisters was playing the piano in the middle of the house. Another brother was running up and down the hallways, sliding on the hardwood floors. You could hear the screen door opening and closing on numerous occasions as my other two siblings were in and out of the house for various reasons. My grandmother's visit was short-lived. In fact, she lived, le left with her eyes wide open, and she said to my mother, Honey, I don't know how you stand it. Now, my mother loved her children, and she enjoyed hearing our laughter and our play. Even so, she embraced silence when it came her way on rare occasions, not only for her peace of mind, but also because God breaks through the silence. 
Silence isn't only a gift, it's foundational. You could say that it's primal. Out of an eternity of silence, God spoke. When we read Genesis 1, we see example after example of God speaking creation into being. It was from silence that our creative God brought forth the universe. This might be what St. John of the Cross meant when he said, silence is God's first language. Yes, God spoke creation out of silence. Both the big, like the universe and billions of stars, and also the small, such as 12,000 species of ants and 350,000 species of beetles. Now, some people might say that God overachieved in that arena of creation. <laughs> Wouldn't one of each have been enough? It's no wonder that many times the lectionary links John 1 and Genesis 1 because in both books, God breaks through the silence. In the centuries prior to Jesus' birth, God had been silent again, not an eternal silence, but four centuries or so of quiet. And out of that four century silence came God's greatest act of creation. God broke through the silence with the Word, also known as Jesus Christ, who became flesh and lived among us. Silence is not a common experience for us, though, especially during the weeks leading up to Christmas. This is the most hectic time of the year for many of us. I suspect that there are some in this sanctuary today or who are watching online who have an event planned for every day between now and Christmas. And the gift purchasing and wrapping, the emails and cards, the extra visits with family, and other kinds of activities fill our days leading up to Christmas. And yet, the Christmas season, or the Christian year, definitely recognizes the importance of silence. Today, as you've already been told, and as many of you knew, is the first Sunday of Advent, the season of the year when we wait and listen and prepare which are all friends of silence. My mom welcomed silence during those times that they came her way while her children were young. Many times, though, silence is not an experience we embrace. Sometimes silences are ominous, long, chilling, and heavy. They can be like that eerie quiet before a major storms. This is the kind of silence that the people of Israel surely experienced in those centuries before Jesus was born. God had been present in their lives in such obvious ways previously though not always pleased with their behaviors and their attitudes, God kept reaching out to them. God kept speaking to them through judges and prophets and prophetesses, kings and events. And God's message had always been consistent. I'm your God and you are my people. Love me and love others, live ethical lives, be a light to the world. 
but they kept turning their backs on God. And now there was this period of time when it seemed like God had gone silent. Maybe some here today in this sanctuary or online are feeling like you're receiving silence from God. Maybe when you pray, it's as if the prayers don't go further than the ceiling. Maybe you wonder why it feels so lonely in your relationship with God. Maybe you even question question whether God really exists. Christ followers hit dry seasons in our walks with God. That is true for every Christian I've ever known. And I know it's certainly been true in my life. This is described so beautifully by George Buttrick in his quote, beating on heaven's door with bruised knuckles in the dark. Have any of you ever felt like that? What does such silence mean? That's a great question we do well to discern when we enter a season of silence. Sometimes God's silence is an indication that we are out of sync with living God's way. This was part of the reason for the silence that the people of Israel were feeling before Jesus' arrival on this earth. They had failed God again and again. Though God had forgiven them repeatedly, now they were experiencing this heavy, deep, foreboding silence. We understand the situation of the people of Israel because we sometimes experience it too. We walk as faithful followers for a while, and then we lose our focus. We stand up, we fall down, we walk straight, and we lose our way. We're gung-ho about our Christian journey. We waver in our focus. And yet through it all, God continually reaches out to us in relationship. Then one day, though, we don't hear God's voice any longer. We listen attentively, but all we hear is scary and frustrating silence. When we do not hear God's voice for a season, we do well to consider the possibility that it has to do with our failure to walk God's way This can include sins of commission, actions, and attitudes that are wrong or omission, not doing what we ought to do. Maybe it's a sharp tongue that hurts others, or stinginess in our sharing of gifts of time and resources, or lackadaisical attitude about our faith, or self-centeredness or some other obstacle that interferes with our relationship with God. Know this, though, our God never leaves us. We, though, sometimes turn our backs on God. The good news of Advent is that silence as a result of our wrong actions does not have to be permanently. When we reach out to the God who's reaching out to us, then we reconnect. Through Jesus Christ's grace, we can walk faithfully with God. And we can receive God breaking through any silence that's been created by our actions or attitudes Silence is not always, though, a sign of our broken relationship with God. Sometimes it is a signal that God is preparing to break into our lives in a remarkable way. 
Such silence is like the darkness before the dawn or a deep sleep before we awaken. It may seem like nothing is happening during that silence, but God is preparing us for a breakthrough in our walk as Christ followers. During God's seeming silence during the centuries prior to Jesus' birth, this was also going on. It may have seemed to the people of Israel like God was silent, but God was at work preparing them for a remarkable breakthrough in their lives. Yes, God's previous ways of communicating with them had not been fully effective. So God was preparing to communicate in a different way by coming to humanity in the person of Jesus Christ. John's gospel describes it succinctly, and the word became flesh and lived among us. Talk about God breaking the silence. God spoke to humanity through the second person of God, God the Son. The silence was broken as God came to earth in the person of Jesus, described in John's gospel as the Word with a capital W. And God continues to break into our lives today through Jesus. More than a man who walked this earth centuries ago, Jesus has been resurrected from the dead, and he lives among us. This reality is what gives us hope in difficult circumstances. It's what motivates us to do that which is right and good and honorable. It is what encourages and inspires us as Jesus walks among us and as God speaks to us through Jesus So, if you're in a season in your relationship with God, where God seems silent, I encourage you to consider the possibility that God is at work in your life in ways that you do not see. Perhaps God is preparing you for a major breakthrough in your walk with God. And if that's the case, The right response is to hold steady, pray faithfully, and wait and watch for what God's up to. When the time is right, God will break through the silence. Sometimes, like my mother with her five rambunctious children, we welcome silence as a gift. But when God seems silent for an extended period, we often resist it. What if instead we welcomed the silence and we considered the reason for it? Maybe it has to do with our relationship with God, or maybe God is breaking into our lives in the near future. The next time you are in a season of silence, I encourage you to engage the silence, looking at all of the possibilities. Maybe God is pricking your conscience about something in your life that needs to change. Consider also, though, the possibility that God is preparing you for a next step in your faith journey. Whatever the reason for the silence, we can know this certainty as much as it was true more than 2,000 years ago. God breaks through the silence with the word known as Jesus. Let us pray together.
God, sometimes we resist silence. Sometimes it's too painful for us. On other occasions, it evokes fear in our hearts. And yet, as we look at Scripture, we realize that sometimes your best work comes out of the silence. So we pray that we will not be afraid of silence, but that we will wait expectantly when we find ourselves in one of those seasons. And we ask that you continue to break the silence of our lives with your word, with Jesus, the Christ child. It is in his name that we pray these things. Amen.